All right, Dr. IJB here, and um, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about vegan um, uh, diets. Um, you know, the, the vegan uh, um, uh, diet people um, are trying to do a good thing, um, even though their diet uh, for me is a little bit weird. Um, uh, they're trying to, to do uh, good things. Um, one thing is they're trying to prevent harm to the animals. Um, uh, uh, obviously, if I have a, a, a steak or a hamburger, uh, some animal had to die for me to get that. Um, uh, you can't uh, expect that uh, you're going to just uh, uh, take the meat off of the cow and the cow is going to survive. Of course not. The cow was slaughtered, uh, carved up, and uh, that's how I got my steak or my hamburger meat. Um, uh, of course, same thing with uh, pork and the, and the pig. Uh, chicken and uh, fish. Um, uh, all these animals have to die for us to eat. Um, and, uh, you know, um, uh, the vegan decides why do we have to do this? This wasteful process of uh, killing animals so we can eat. We're a educated society and we should be able to uh, take care of uh, ourselves with uh, um, harmless uh, situations. So they decide that they're going to focus on plants. Now, another good thing about vegan um, is the fact that it's great for the environment. When you feed corn and soybean to a cow, it's a wasteful process. In other words, not 100% of the corn and soybean, um, uh, uh, when it's turned into meat, uh, comes to us as humans. Um, there is some loss of the energy um, uh, because the cow, when it eats these uh, products, has to put on the muscle, has to, you know, uh, do things like breathing and beating its heart and walking and stuff. So there's a loss of energy um, in this. So it might be, you know, let's just give a, let's just make up a number. Let's just say that 50% um, of the energy from the uh, corn or soybean is lost in producing the meat. And remember that um, when you're raising a cow, you're taking a, a small animal, the calf, and you're turning it into this 1,000-pound uh, cow. Um, so that requires a lot of energy to get to that point before we can eat it. Um, now, if we did just ate the corn or the soybean, all the energy goes directly to us, and we utilize it instead of wasting it on the cow. So what this also means is um, uh, there's less waste that's produced by the animal. Um, when a cow eats corn and soybean, um, it can't process 100%. There's some waste produced. So when this cow has to um, pass its waste on the ground, those uh, wastes actually go into the environment, go into the groundwater, etc. And, you know, um, so there's some... Uh, uh, contamination uh, of, uh, of uh, the area from the cow or the pig or whatever. Um, and uh, even if it's a fish in the ocean, the fish has to go to the bathroom too. So all these things uh, basically cause waste products. Also, um, the thing is, there's a certain amount of acreage that's necessary for each cow to be able to survive. It has to eat so much corn, so much soybean, so much hay. So there's a certain amount of acreage uh, for the cow. If we eat just uh, the plants, there's less acreage that's needed to um, you know, feed us than it is to feed the cow and then for the cow to feed us because of that wasteful process. Um, uh, so the energy goes directly to us instead of being wasted to the cow and then back to us again. Now, um, uh, these are all good things. Um, the problem medically uh, with veganism is the, the, the problem with malnutrition uh, issues. Um, there are certain things that plants just don't contain. So there is no such thing as a plant B12, which people can use. Um, there are chemicals that are similar to B12 um, in the plant world, but we can't use them. Uh, just like there are plant hormones that are very similar to let's say testosterone or estrogen, 
but they really won't work too good. So um, in other words, if you have an estrogen deficiency and you take a plant hormone that looks similar to estrogen, um, it's not going to prevent you from being in menopause. Um, it might even interfere um, uh, by blocking your ability to get estrogen to your, to your, horm uh, to your receptor sites. Um, if you're a woman who has, um, uh, has periods, the estrogen might even make you, uh, from the plants might even make you infertile, uh, might interfere with your periods. Um, so, you know, there are chemicals in plants that are uh, similar but not you, uh, being able to use by us. And the plant B12, we can't use. Uh, it's a different uh, form of it, and it's just not biologically absorbable. Same thing goes for iron. There, yes, there is iron in, in uh, spinach, and that's why Popeye loves spinach, but you can't absorb it. It's bound up in the, in the proteins. Calcium, the same thing. There's no good calcium source in the plant world. Um, what little calcium there is is not really absorbable because it's bound up in the plants again. So um, uh, the, the person who is a vegan has to supplement their diet with vitamins. Um, it's always a good idea to take like a multiple vitamin um, uh, to supplement your diet if you're taking, if you're on a vegan diet so that you can kind of replace those things that you can't uh, absorb from the plant world. Um, and there are vegan multivitamins available where the, the vitamins didn't come from an animal. Um, so uh, by doing this, you can have your vegan uh, choices and at the same time, uh, you're able to uh, take in enough supplements so you don't have to worry about any harm caused by lack of uh, uh, certain uh, nutrients. Um, now, of course, don't forget that we eat fruits and vegetables too, even if we are meat eaters. So we use the vitamins and minerals that are in fruits and vegetables. So there are plenty of good vitamins and minerals that are in uh, vegan choices. Um, it's just that there are certain animal type things that just are not available. So that's why you have to supplement your diet with vegan. Okay, so that's a little bit about vegan diets, uh, the good and the bad.